It's time for the B-A-Q-A, A, the B-A-Q-A, what you say, the B-A-Q-A with Mandate, the B-A-Q-A with Tiffany, the B-A-Q-A, A. Oh, I was trying so hard not to yawn. <laughs> yeah. I know you're tired, so mama. So hard. Ugh, but I had to. Hi. Hey, how, how are you? This is the mm. B-A-Q-A where we answer your question to the best of our ability, but please remember we are not... Your doctor, your attorney, your financial advisor, just two smart, beautiful, talented, amazing, delicious. Anyway, brown girls who know a thing or two about money, career, business, et cetera, et cetera. So you take what we say with the largest grain of salt, a little paprika if you like. Um, so we have our career questions today because we have our career, our resident career coach, Mandy. <laughs> Actually, I texted her this weekend because a friend of mine was like, Hey, need a career coach for one on one? I just love that Mandy was like, she can join Mandy Mandy Makers. Um, make sure if, she knows that. <laughs> and if it's a fit, maybe I could do it. I was like, yes, girl. No, if it's a fit, then she can choose. It'll be a fit because I'm a particular flavor. I'm not <laughs> Tiffany. I'm not anyone else. So that's why I'm like, she needs to dive into my Insta, see if she likes the way I talk. Because when you yeah. get on a coaching call with me, which I only do for Mandy Money Makers in my um in my career academy. When you get on a coaching call, I'm just going to be yeah. here. Yeah. You're like, hey, sis, where's your LinkedIn profile? Let me get on there. Ooh, this picture mm. of what? No, change it. You're like, oh, this is my mm. vibe, you know? I love it. Okay. It's not for everyone. So she's looking it over. So, you know, hopefully she'll make a move. Yes. But yeah. yeah, if she decides she wants to enroll and I'm and enrollment's not open, then you just send her my way and we'll work it out. Okay. Okay. Um, but that's a good opportunity to, I, I don't know if I've, and I had definitely haven't announced it on the podcast yet, but- okay. I mentioned that this is the year of reaping in my business and I'm working on mm. my book and I'm being very, I'm trying to be as choosy as I can with my work obligations um, because I, yeah, I need to be able to focus on this book and get this thing done. Plus still be a mom, a daughter, a wife, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but because of where we're at in the economy and because I'm only doing coaching through my Mandy money makers, I know for some people, it doesn't seem like there's a way to access me. Now, of course, you have Brown Ambition q and A. So you can send mm -hmm. us questions like you guys do, which is great. But then you don't know when the question will be answered. Or if I or if right. One of the um, one of the products that I have been selling for the past year is called Nail Your Negotiation. It's over 20 scripts mm -hmm. to negotiate um, whether you're asking for a raise, whether you're countering a job offer, all different types of scenarios, all types of scripts. Um, and I normally charge forty seven dollars. I'm making it entirely free. Um, so it's you awesome. can go to it's all free. I'm giving it away, um, and just because I want to, and I just. I you love know, that. You guys can have it. Okay. So mandymoneyscripts.com is where you can pick up your 25. So we're up to 25 now. Um, nail your negotiation scripts. Uh, it's Mandy Money Scripts. It's Mandy with an I. And then scripts, S C R I P T S. There. Do it right. Yes, you did. Mandymoneyscripts.com. Get your free scripts. Okay. Yes. And let me know how they work for you. And just so you know, like one of Mandy's tips, like gay made me about $1.2 million. Was that last year? It was last year into this year. Yeah. And so she being all in. Which is about that time to start letting your people know. We've been Price doing it. Up. Yes. Ever since you told Q4 me. I'm like, coming up. Girl. All right. Yeah, so I'm going to do the first question. This is. Um, oh, we're going to call her Tired Hamster. Long time listener, first time writer. Love that. I love you guys. Thanks so much for sharing your wisdom, jokes, and good vibes with us every week. Sending you guys lots of love. Love received. Thank you, girl. Um, I am five years into a new career, made a career switch five years ago. I reached senior level at my nine to five, but I also work a remote job five days a week including seven hours on most weekends. Dang, I'm proud of myself for managing two jobs for more than two years. However, I got the remote job during the pandemic when we were all stuck inside and figure why not use my time as well. That remote job is easy, pays decent money and comes with great benefits and a pension. It helped me to pay for a wedding and home and a down, um, and home down payment expenses and just overall has come in handy to cover inflation and interest rates increases on my mortgage over the last year. Both jobs gross over what? $100,000 and I'm the breadwinner in my household. Girl, you know, there's underemployed and there's employed. You were overemployed. There's like, mm -hmm. this is incredible. $200,000 a year jobs. Plus, um, I can't let go of either job right now as I need the income from both. 
I'd also like to get pregnant in the near future and understand that I won't be able to sustain both jobs with this many structured hours along with being a mom. Okay. Please offer any advice you can as sis feels stuck and tired. I know, girl, I'm actually put tired like in quotes, like we don't know what T I I I E D. Girl, we black. We know tired. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to see the path to getting off the hamster wheel, but I'm getting discouraged. Appreciate any online big sister advice you guys can offer. Um, tired hamster. A more context. She has three months of emergency funded. That's funded, and she has eighteen thousand invested. Mm. Oh, hamster, ham, ham, hammy ham. So maybe this sounds like your your cup of tay tay, honey. <laughs> Well, I mean, no wonder you're so tired. Yeah. As I was reading it, I was like, so how long can she keep this up for? Mm-hmm. And it makes sense to me that you don't have children because, yeah, <laughs> in a way, inhale. <laughs> you could do that. If you, I mean, if you, you could either like work, you know, two jobs or you could like see your kids. So, you know, I'm not judging either way. If you want to not see your kids, you can keep the jobs, but it sounds like you want to see your kids. Mm-hmm. Something's got to give. I think that's like the the clear thing here. I can't make either of these jobs suddenly bring in the same amount of money so you can drop one. Mm-hmm. What I'm concerned about is right now you say you can't let go of either job as you need the income from both. I want to know why you need that income. Mm-hmm. Part of me is worried that you started living Mm-hmm. Uh, like your expenses got to where you could only afford what you spend based on your income. That's troubling. Although I am mm-hmm. like really proud of you for yeah. using that money to pay for your wedding and your home down. Oh, you said a mm-hmm. home down payment. So now I'm worried. Is it that your mortgage mm-hmm. is too expensive for what you make at one of the jobs versus the other? Um, I want to say to you that you have permission to get off of the hamster wheel that you made for yourself. Yeah, that is served you for a time. And now you got to think of something different. Mm -hmm. And I think that that for you is going to look like either one of these jobs stays um, and you reduce your lifestyle to where you can afford it or you um, look for ways to get get a raise, get more money at one of these jobs um, or find another job that can pay you, you know, what you want so that you can maintain your lifestyle. Um, That's like off the top of my head. I just... I, I I gave the same advice to a Mandy moneymaker who uh, had been long-term unemployed since last December, and she was working, I don't want to give away everything, but three part-time jobs wow. because that's how much she wanted to be able to sustain the lifestyle she had from when she had a full-time job. Okay. And she still wanted to be job searching. And I was like, so at a certain point, mm-hmm. sanity and time mm-hmm. are being like undervalued versus money for yeah. stuff and things, you know? And I'm like, if you continue, you know, stressing yourself, hard, trying to maintain this lifestyle, you're, you're going to end up like tired hamster, just tired, yeah. you know? Um, and like something's going to have to give and it may not lead, like it may mean reducing your, in, uh, your expenses or, mm-hmm. you know, scaling back somewhere, which, which it won't feel good. But when you feel better, when you're getting more sleep, when you have free time to do things that you enjoy, like yeah. not working. Yeah, seven hours on the weekend. Here's my concern with like this, like I'm setting aside the financial part, right? That Manny talked about. My concern of like the emotional drain and the physical drain in your body. I mean, I'll never know for sure, but you know, I wasn't able to have kids. Jarell and I tried. Um, and I, although there is like some um, hereditary thing where like my... My eggs, you know, uh, typically your eggs start to decline, you know, like uh, I think they say like at past 30, you like, you know, you drop, you drop by 50% of your ability to get pregnant, 35, even more. Um, But I, my eggs started to decline earlier than the average woman. Um, Mm. But so I think to myself, had I not been so busy, maybe I could have tried earlier or two, you know, there was just a level of stress and overwork and overwhelmed that like. Even when I, I did like, uh, before we started IVF, I did get, um, uh, pregnant, but didn't know I was filled with fibroids because who had time to go to the doctor regularly? And so I lost the baby, you know, as a result of that. There was like, I knew I was having a miscarriage because I could just tell it was so much pain. I, I just didn't realize the harm that I was doing to my body, not just my body, but my mind. And because I was not taking care of myself, you know, I didn't know I had fibroids when I went to, I remember distinctly going to the emergency room, you know, being so scared that I'm like, I think I'm losing the baby. 
And um, the doctors, the, the emergency doctor is saying, are you sure you're pregnant? I'm like, yeah, I took another test. I was like, why? He's like, I can't see anything but fibroids. Mm-hmm. And I could tell he was like, how do you not know? I, w- I, did, I had not carved out any time to take care of myself. And so I just say all that to say that, you know, a lot of my friends who are in their like mid to late thirties and early forties, you know, are starting to think about family planning now because they postponed and some of them won't have any issues. Some of them will be able to have babies with the assistance of medical assistance. And some of them may not ever be able to have, you know, children. And so if having children, this is for anybody listening, not just hamster wheel, if having children is important to you and something that you're wanting to do then you want to prioritize that above all else because there is a limit for women. You know, they tell you can have it all, you can have it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it comes to having children, there is a biological limit. And then to pretend if you want to physically have your own children. Now, you know, you can always adopt and other things, you know, certainly. But if you want to physically give birth to your own baby, you know, there is a limit about when, that can happen and it drops the older you get. So you want to consider one, either prioritizing having children now or two, at the very least consider maybe freezing your eggs because the beautiful thing about eggs is that if you freeze your eggs at 28 and then you don't get them implanted, you know, um, until you are like say 40, it's still a 28 year old egg. So as long as your body is fit, the egg has not aged. Does that make sense? And I didn't know that. And I wish that like somebody would have tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, busy Tiffany at 29 or 28 when you still had good insurance or whatever, you know, you could freeze your eggs now and still have like this really viable like series of eggs. And then when you're 37 and still really fit and healthy, you can have a baby with a younger egg because your body is more than capable. So just consider that as well, especially since you have, if you tell me you have a pension, all that, usually those types of jobs have healthcare that might cover that. So just consider that, that like, I get it. Money is so important in this world. We cannot navigate. We cannot eat. We can't anything without money. So I understand that, but you know, don't want to forget about like, there has to be life lived, you know, like money is made to pay all the bills and things like that. But, you know, think about what do you have to do in order to also live life beyond just making a ton of money. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, it just reminds me of how difficult it is to see yourselves, to see ourselves as any other version than we are right now if we're young Mm -hmm. and healthy. It's really hard to imagine yourself as tired and physically debilitated, is that a word? Mm Then as you'll be when you are pregnant and in the months Mm -hmm. after. And my second pregnancy was so much worse than my first in terms of the impact to my body. And I was like, oh, this is what it feels like to just be like, I don't know, just old and pain from all different places. And like, you don't want to do it. And just anyway, it's hard. And I think that you're building a life for yourself for the version of yourself that you are now, like you have mm-hmm. the energy and you do this, you do these things. And this is sort of the risk of matching your lifestyle expenses to the money that you're earning. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you have to keep like generating more and more income to pay for the lifestyle that you're creating, how long can you sustain that? And what version of yourself do you have to be for that long time to be able to sustain it? And I'm not saying I want to, I want to believe that we can all be Serena Williams in the Australian open <laughs> months and months pregnant. Like, yes, we can do that. Yes, we can be on tour with Beyonce seven months pregnant with a trombone, <laughs> just like killing it. Absolutely. But <laughs> those are, you know, very interest, very unique exceptions. Right. Yes. And I doubt, and they were only doing that one thing. You know what yes. I mean? They weren't also working a hundred hours a week. So yeah. just, just think about that. And, um, yeah. Take some of the pressure off yourself too. Because yeah. like Tiff said, the pressure of being the breadwinner and having yeah. two jobs, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yes. Ooh, that's the word. Yeah. Ooh, that should literally be the name. Hey, Im- producer Imani. I feel like that's <laughs> a good title for the show. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah. Can- or maybe can doesn't mean should. Yeah. Time to start saying no for making money just for the sake of it and saying yes to what you really want and your value. And But thank yourself for doing the grind while you could grind. Yes. You know? Yes. Gonna take a break? Yeah, let's take a quick break. Thank you, Tired Hamster. We'll be right back with another question, another heavy one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're back with our next question. This is from listener, we'll call her Crossroads. Mm. Um, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Crossroads. <laughs> See you at the Crossroads. 
That video used to scare the crap out of me when I, you couldn't oh, tell me that those oh, black oh, eyes, I like know, it was, and I'm going to miss everybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would just be petrified, but glued to VH1 watching that. <laughs> anyway, another heavy question. I kind of feel like this is the time that we're in now is a lot of people dealing with the economy and also just the past three years of grinding and grinding and grinding um, in the wake of the pandemic. But Let's get into it. Crossroads says, I'm a faithful listener of Brown Ambition. I love the advice you provide weekly. Here's my situation. I've been on the job search since January of 22 when I left my full-time jobs because when I left my full-time job because I was experiencing racism from my supervisor and colleagues and I left feeling unsafe in my work environment. Mm -hmm. I have over a decade of full-time work experience in my field. At the time and currently, I have been a full-time PhD student, which allowed me to be a graduate assistant to make ends meet. Now I've been applying and interviewing sometimes for four and five rounds for a job, but no job offer. Mm -hmm. Or I would get through the interview and get a lowball offer, which I know if if, if I took it, it would set me back in my career. I'm near the end of my PhD program and I need to secure a position. At this point, I'm considering switching industries because it shouldn't be this difficult to secure a role in my field when there are always openings. My PhD field is broad and would allow me the flexibility to work in many industries. I've been trying my best to stay upbeat and optimistic, but this situation has taken a toll on me. Mm -hmm. My question is, should I continue to apply for roles in my current field or make a career switch and rebuild? For context, I am in my mid thirties, no kids, no spouse. Thank you in advance and cr- congratulations on your new bundle. Oh, yeah. mm. thank you. This is tough. Oh, well, I would say that, yeah, I mean, knocking on a door that's always closed, you know, I, I think, I mean, it's one, it's obviously going to take, I'm loving that you're trying to stay optimistic, but it's going to take a toll. How would that not take a toll? And you switching industries. At first, I thought you were like almost like you were going to ditch the PhD program and just switch up, but that doesn't sound like that. It mm-hmm. sounds like you're like, no, no, that with my PhD, that it could cover a wide range of industries. Awesome. And that, you know, it would, it would mean, and you're thinking like you're going to be starting from scratch. And certainly you'll be starting, you know, maybe a different industry, but not super from scratch because you have a PhD. And you still have experiences that transfer over. And so honestly, I, for my own sake and sanity, I probably would start to explore like what other ways can I use my PhD in industries that I'm interested in exploring? Because maybe that's a sign, you know, that it's like, I mean, I don't know if the current industry that you're in that um, racism, because there are some industries it's baked in. Mm-hmm. You know, and maybe that's like this kind of like divine sign that's like, sis, you don't want to be over here. You know, mm. that that racism is baked into this particular way of navigating and that, you know, you can use your PhD in these six other ways. Pick, choose your adventure. So maybe that's a sign. And, and you're young, honestly. I know sometimes we we think to ourselves like, oh, I'm not young anymore. I'm 30 something. I'm like, girl, you got a three in front of you in your number. You are, you know, in, in the relative scope of things you are and you're able to switch, you know, and, and your decision is not going to affect whether or not a kid is going to eat or not. Your spouse will be able to, I know it's harder because you don't have a partner to potentially help with bills being paid, but to continue to get knocked back down, I just think that what I don't, oh my God. Of is he okay? Check talking. on him. No, or no, this is my sister. Just... Oh, you know, okay. is, sorry. I don't know how. To turn, you know, like my computer always rings. I'm like, I looked it up. Oh, just say, does you do you have Siri turned on? Yes. Or do you have a little Siri button? I do. Siri. Say, say hey, Siri, put on hey. Do Not Disturb. Hmm? Please put on Do Not Disturb. Okay. Do Not Disturb is now on. <laughs> Thanks, Siri. Which a nosy is. And then also but on your computer, <laughs> do the same thing. Because on your top left, if you see like a little Siri icon, click it. Mm-hmm. Do I see it? Oh, I do. It's like the little place on do not disturb. Oh my God. No, don't play a song. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> I thought you said something. play, play, not place. <laughs> oh, turn on do not disturb. <laughs> <laughs> it's like song, not play. You need to keep this in your body. Let the people hear how we struggle. Um, well, we're, we're always wrapping up, but I'm going to do that later. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure you never, ever leave the iPhone and just stay an iPhone user. So let me help you in any way I can. <laughs> no, 
know, but like, no, what were we saying, baby? Girl, I don't know. Oh, yeah, no, no, okay. just like, yeah, I was yeah, just so, about yeah. to pick up. You yeah, pick up, given. please. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I think the hardest thing is you're, yes, you have been, so you've been job searching since January, 2022. You've also been a PhD program. And I think you're heading into this and it's a tough job market. I don't, I wish I knew what industry you're in so I could give like real nuanced or more specific advice, but just in general, job interview fatigue will hit the Mm. best of us, um, especially if it's not leading to any offers. So I'm down for a pivot. I'm always down. I'm down for being, and even like calling it a pivot, which I, I don't mind the word pivot, but mm-hmm. I also, I just don't want people to feel like it has to be some big, tough decision. Like, should I pivot, pivot, <laughs> pivot, pivot? <laughs> you know, like the drama. Just try maybe something different. Try a different direction um, and see if you get better results from that. You know, um, I feel like the skills that you've developed for the past decade, like you said, you can apply them to probably um, many other types of jobs or industries. So I think if you could be a little creative, that would be awesome. Maybe it's take your skills and try a different industry, take your PhD and apply that to the industry you were in, but come at it from a different, you know, job level. Um, I'm just trying to show you that there's, there's overlap, you know, and there may mm-hmm. be opportunities that are not exactly what you were doing before, but could, that could be a great fit. If you just think a little bit more creatively about the skills that you have, the education that you've acquired through your PhD program and how those can come together to provide value for a company. Um, and also if you've, I know you've been interviewing for, you know, a year or so, um, almost, you know, year and a half at the same time, don't worry so much about job titles. Sometimes I like to encourage people Mm. to search for jobs blind from the job title because it can mean different things and the pay may not even be that great, but you may get caught up in looking for a certain title. Mm -hmm. Um, And at this point, a year and a half in some industries, a lot can change. Trends can go in and out of style. So look for job descriptions and job skills that work for you um, and do what you can to beef up that network. I always, I feel like if you are someone who's getting interviews, but you're not getting to the final round, um, I want to start asking, you know, what has, if there's been any feedback, is it that they're mm-hmm. just doing internal candidates? Um, is it that there was someone else who just had a little bit more of this, that, and the third? Um, and it may not just be because you lack something, but it could be because someone had a connection or they mm-hmm. knew someone or um, had a referral. Well, how can you get yourself some personal endorsements, some referrals, some connections, and how can we, you know, start building up that network so that you can go in even stronger? Um, to the next job interview. That's what I'll say. And I'll also just say, try and take a break and try and give yourself some grace because what you're describing is really frustrating. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be really tired and really frustrated, Um, but you can be tired and frustrated and to give yourself a break, but then you got to get back at it because what's the alternative? Your life is you have, you're only in your Mm thirties. There's no way this is the period on the paragraph of your life, my friend. Like there's no way (laughs) there's stuff that's coming after this, you know, Mm -hmm. you're going to get there. Um, I like to sometimes imagine myself like one, two, five years in the future thinking, oh, that's not a problem for her anymore. She's way past that. So kind of just whatever you can do for your mindset to, to help yourself see past the struggle and the challenge that'll help you get, you know, get through it. Yeah. All right. Two, two questions from BA listeners. You just need to be scooped up and held. Yeah. In our, in our BA embrace. <laughs> be our BA bosom. <laughs> our, B- <laughs> <laughs> our BA bosom. Yes. Uh, if you uh, have questions though, and you want to be held in a BA bosom, mm-hmm. go ahead on over to Brown and Bishop podcast.com and click contact us. Um, uh, Brown Ambition Podcast on IG, slide into the DMs, and um, Brown Ambition Podcast at gmail.com. And yeah, we're here for you, girlies. All the things. You know? mm-hmm. All right, until, until next week, y'all. Next week. Bye, y'all. Bye.